Welcome to the class Computational Neuroscience, Neural Dynamics of Cognition. This week I would like to talk about decision models. We will look at competitive dynamics to explain decision making. Now we take decisions all the time. Should I take a coffee before going to class or not? Should I vote for candidate A or B? Should I turn left or right at the next crossing? So as a child I used to play games and often there was the decision to make. Should I make the long detour or should I take the risky shortcut? So we believe that decision making takes place in the brain and it takes place by interaction between different populations. Now for populations, we have already developed a model. We have population activity that follows the input potential and the input potential is given by a differential equation. Now this kind of model is the model we are going to use this week, and we should remember that this is a model that's valid only in a certain limit. It neglects fast transient oscillations. It will always show low transients. In fact, it's valid for a model with high noise, uh, escape noise, also called a fast noise model. So even though we know it has limitations, it's valid for high noise only. Transients might be wrong. It may neglect spontaneous oscillations. Nevertheless, Despite its limitations, this is the model we are going to use this week. And what we are going to do is we either make simulations or we directly work with patients for the population's activity and different populations interact with each other. And specifically, we'll have two populations. Both of these are excitatory populations. There's one that would indicate, for example, movement to the left. And there's another one that, for example, would indicate movement to the right. And these populations are in competition with each other because they both share a pool of inhibitory neurons. So if one of the populations is active, it sends strong signals to the inhibitory population, which in turn sends signals to the other one. So that this population, if it has strong activity, will effectively suppress the other population. Decision-making is everywhere. For example, you may win, you get a winning ticket, and you are asked to pick up your money at the closest post office, and you have two choices. Either you pick up 30 Swiss francs tomorrow, or 100 Swiss, fran Swiss francs next year. Now, which one would you choose? Maybe you think Switzerland is a reliable country, so it's worthwhile waiting for a year, and 100 francs next year is more worth than 30 francs tomorrow. Now, how about this? 90 francs tomorrow or 100 francs next year? Your decision might be slightly different. So there's a whole field of neuroeconomics where people look at this kind of questions and look at the decision-making that people make. And this decision-making is based on neurons. You can look at the neural activity during this kind of decision-making but these are very specific decisions, decisions involving money. We'll more look at simpler decisions, decisions that are related to perception. For example, I can show you three bars, three vertical bars. And the question is, is the middle bar slightly shifted to the left or to the right? So to summarize, there are all sorts of decisions. Decisions are everywhere. And we are going to model these decisions by using populations of neurons. And these populations of neurons will interact. So if a first population is very active, it will effectively suppress a second population. On the other hand, if the second population is active, it will suppress the first one. So the two populations are in competition with each other. Decisions are everywhere. There's neuroeconomics, but we will mainly focus in the following on perceptual decision tasks. Stay tuned to understand the models involved in decision-making.